are social animals so you might assume our brains are built to excel when we cooperate with each other, as opposed to when we function in isolation. Now research with another animal supports that notion plain. Tailed wrens in Ecuador are famous for duets between males and females. While their song is done cooperatively, with the male and female singing alternate syllables, it sounds surprisingly like one bird singing solo. In a 2007 Vanity Fair article Christopher Hitchens asked, Why are men, taken on average and as a whole, funnier than women? Well a recent study finds that men might have a tiny edge over women in producing humor but the gap is too small to account for the stereotype. Scientists had 16 male and 16 female subjects write funny captions for 20 New Yorker magazine cartoons in 45 minutes. Then the captions were rated by a different group of 34 male and 47 female subjects. Men's captions rated higher on average than women's captions but only by a mere 0.11 points out of perfect score of 5.0. The study is published in the journal Psychonomic Bulletin and Review. They found that the bird's neurons reacted far more strongly to the duet than when they sang their parts alone. The research is in the journal Science. That's fine for Ecuadorian birds but what about us humans? Well, vertebrate animals all have similar neurotransmitter systems and the brain is organized in much of the same way, so the paper's authors hold that there is relevance to the human brain. Or at least to those vertebrates who have a tendency to cooperate in the first place. The researchers also found that unfunny captions were more often wrongly attributed to women and funny ones misattributed to men. Given the tiny edge men held, why does the stereotype have a strong hold? Maybe men just make more attempts at humor. For example, fewer women win the New Yorker caption contests, but fewer enter. When women do enter, however, they tend to win with fewer attempts compared to men, which may give women the last laugh. They focused their attention on birds because our feathered friends have a cardiovascular system much like our own, in that blood exerts pressure on the blood vessel walls. The results. Parakeet thrombocytes don't stick together like platelets do. They also don't block blood flow in the birds. Arteries the same way that platelets do when they form clots in mice. Which means that mice may be more likely to survive a bloodletting, pecking. But birds are far less likely to suffer from the clot formation called economy class syndrome, despite being frequent flyers. They say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But sometimes what makes you stronger can kill you, at least when it comes to blood clotting. Because the stickiness that allow platelets to heal your wounds also raises your risk of heart attack. All mammals use platelets to help prevent blood loss after traumatic injury. But birds don't have them, nor do reptiles or fish. Instead, these critters have blood cells called thrombocytes, which are about twice the size of platelets. But is bigger necessarily better when it comes to clotting. Scientists took thrombocytes from parakeets and put them to the test. The work appears in the journal Blood.
all around the world, significant parts of our cultural heritage are threatened by pollution, neglect, carelessness, and greed. In learning the importance of our history, we come to understand the need to protect significant remains from the past so that future generations can come to understand their heritage. The word horn is derived from a Greek verb that means to excite. Hormones are found in all multicellular organisms and function to coordinate the parts of the organism. A hormone is a chemical signal. It is produced by one part of the body and is then transported to other parts of the body where it triggers responses in cells and tissues. The concept of chemical messengers in plants first emerged from a series of classic experiments on how plant stands respond to light. Think about this. A house plant on the windowsill grows toward light. If you rotate the plant, it will soon reorient its growth until its leaves again face the window. The growth of a plant toward light is called phototropism. In a forest or other natural ecosystem where plants may be crowded, The World Health Organization says 12 years ago, India alone was responsible for almost 70% of all polio cases around the world. It calls India's success against polio one of the most significant achievements in public health. WHO officials say India's accomplishment proved the crippling disease can be eliminated in even the most challenging circumstances with a strong political commitment. The number of polio cases has decreased from an estimated 350,000 a year to 33. Since the WHO launched its global eradication campaign in 1988,
India has downplayed the impact of U.S. plans to end New Delhi's preferential trade status that allows duty-free access to products worth $5.6 billion. Saying that India has not assured the United States that it will provide equitable and reasonable access to its markets, U.S. President Donald Trump has directed the U.S. Trade Representative's Office to remove India from a program that grants it preferential trade treatment. In 2017, India was the biggest beneficiary of the Generalized System of Preferences, GSP, which lowers duties on exports from about 120 developing countries. The Indian Commerce Secretary told reporters in New Delhi that India has no plans to impose retaliatory tariffs on U.S. goods.